Anyone who has been watching my channel for a while now know about the bone of beauty or the bone that determines your attractiveness, the maxilla or upper jaw. It's related to your nose, mid-face ratio, cheekbones, eye area, and even connected to the lower jaw. So it's kind of very important, you know. If you are not up to speed with the maxilla and its importance and how to improve it, I have two videos about it you can watch. This video will go into details into maxillary projection and a new aspect to this subject called facial depth in a short and to the point format. This video, like many others, will be split into two main parts. The first part will talk about maxillary projection, and the second one will talk about facial depth. If you want to support the channel and get your face evaluated by me with personalized look max and advice, link will be down in the description. If you want to read more about topics like these, you can check out my blog at nearfacerating.com. Without further ado, let's get this video started. Without wasting any time, let's quickly recap what the maxilla is. The upper maxilla is essentially the Lefort 2 area minus the Lefort 1 area. The upper maxilla includes the inner infraorbital rims, the nasal bridge, the canine fossa area, and most importantly, the nasal aperture. So what does the upper maxilla projection look like? Upper maxillary projection is characterized by the area from the front of the cheekbones to the back of the nose being a smooth transition when viewed from the side, as seen here off screen. The man in this example has a seamless blend between the zygoma and the back of the nose. Contrast that with this other man who has clearly a defined border in the same spot. The difference is due to the slope of the bone around the nasal aperture with the forward upper maxilla. The bone on the left and the right taper forward and inward toward the nose with a flat upper maxilla. The bones on both sides of the upper maxilla are parallel. Projected upper maxillas are typically seen in caucasoids whereas a flat upper maxilla is a mongoloid trait. Another way to look at this is in terms of the position of the nasal aperture. The hole in the skull you breathe through. An aesthetic upper maxilla is for the most part a projected nasal aperture. Here's an East Asian woman who got a nose job as well as some procedures that moved her nasal aperture forward and made the surrounding tissue more slanted forward toward the center. As you can see, she used to have a clearly defined border between the front of her zygos and the back of her nose. And after surgery, it turned into a smooth blended transition, which is ideal. We will quickly go over the differences between a projected upper maxilla and a projected nose. This is a guy with a recessed maxilla. Giving him a forward protruding caucasoid nose doesn't result in a good look. His nasal aperture and the nose around it needs to get pulled forward, like this, which gives better results. So let's talk about facial depth for a bit. Facial depth is basically a refined version of forward growth theory. While some people might say water is wet, this updated theory explains why many mid-face implants designs look fake and stuck on and why modified Lefort 3, often abbreviated as LMF3, has almost no chance of creating an extremely aesthetic face. Here we can see an example of separate and categorized facial depths. Certain landmarks are constant and cannot be changed, like the external auditory meters, tragus, anterior posterior positioning of the eyes, neck, and to some extent, the hyoid bone. These are the constant reference marks. Everything else can be moved forward with the properly modified surgeries. The most overlooked subcategory of facial depth is anterior facial depth, which is a projection or retrusion in the Lefort 2 region. It's probably the area which sets apart average people from beautiful people the most. For the anterior facial depth, the projection of the central midface of the posterior midface and is enhanced through Lefort 2 osteotomy. Posterior facial depth, the projection of the entire face as a unit from the rest of the skull and corrected by Lefort 3 advancements or implants informed by the Lefort 3 concept. When all of the subcategories of facial depths are sufficiently projecting, the face fits into a square shape. Adding facial depth to the true Lefort 2 or Lefort 3 that goes up and over the nose can give a very powerful yet natural looking results. So called modified Lefort 3 and Lefort 2 osteotomies, which leaves out the nose and nasions can't do this any better than custom implants can. The main aesthetic problem with the non syndrome Lefort 2 is the medial canthus is usually pulled too forward of the eyeball. And in the past, this has required medial canthus sit-back procedure with a transnasal wire, which is not natural appearing and only belongs in syndrome craniofacial surgery. However, Lefort 2 can be modified to be in front of the medial canthus. Of course, there is much more to this subject, but this about sums up today's yapping session. What do you guys think about all of this? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. That's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A like and subscribe will be highly appreciated. And like usual, catch you guys in the next one.